trying to help you. I just have a bunch of work. Well, I am kind of sexy and all that. Back in 96 when we had our last flood and it disrepaired our beach where we were unable to use it for subsistence, for storing our stuff. It wasn't safe enough, you know, from the waves. We didn't have the equipment or the funding to, to maintain it. So the waves might have played a big part of what happened with our landslides, especially on the south side of our village. With help from the Norton Sound Economic Development Corporation, Diomede received funding to transport and construct gabions, which have helped prevent further erosion. The downside is that locals had to move much of their seawall to the erosion site. Concerns now rest upon the durability of their existing seawall and the well-being of the village. Some residents are interested in relocating the village but the rocky slopes, lack of usable land for housing construction, and the inability to construct a water and sewer system have made relocating the village a huge endeavor. Although times have changed, and so have many places around the world, Diomed remains the same in many ways. The people still hunt the sea and gather berries and greens from the island. The animals still provide food and clothing for the people, and their culture is still very much alive. But one thing that has changed over the years is the language. The present education system has a lot of things to do with it, you know. The, uh, like I said a while ago, none of these children, in fact, most, most all of them don't speak the native tongue. They might understand it, but they don't exercise it more often than some other do. My time, we, that's our only way of communication. Now, you can see, as you walk out there, you can see all, at most every children is, is speaking in English. Time change. It's just time change. This is a long time ago. They used to speak. I remember my brother used to tell me, Dennis, he used to tell me, he used to, he used to speak Nupia when he was young. He used to speak it in school, but it was bad in school. They, they quit that. They couldn't speak in school. That, I think that was the reason why we lost using our language slowly. 
It's been said that the youth of rural Alaska are living in two worlds, one world being the traditional native lifestyle that they have grown accustomed to, and the other world being outside world, which is becoming ever more present in their daily lives. This balancing act for the kids has forced teachers to take an alternate approach to the educational process. Just this year we started to implement what's called the quality school model, and what that is is we're, we're taking the Alaska standards and then we, then the Barron Strait School District actually made them a little bit more precise and then we're teaching to the standards rather than just letting a book direct what we do, we let, we do, we try to teach the standards and once they master the standards at each level then they progress to the next level. It's all more independent studies also, a lot of it's project based which is excellent for the, for the students that we have because Rather than just doing book work, they got to be out doing real life skills. They've got to be, and that's part of the component is that they got to. We have to address every standard need to be addressed in a way that they can use it in their real life. So it make education really practical, and and they start seeing why they need to be educated. To me, you can't totally show up and not teach them about themselves. And last year, I was very. When last year was my first year. No, I was very opposed to teaching anything about the outside. But then I realized, probably maybe after two months of doing it, that really, ultimately, you're doing them a disservice by not teaching about the outside. Because they, they need to know about that world, you know, almost as much as they need to know about this world. And they need to be able to balance both right. in order to be healthy adults or grow into healthy adults. For writing, for instance, you know, how do you, how do you go get, catch a bird? you know, and write down the steps for that, you know, you got to teach a kid how to organize a piece of writing, you know, so, you know, give me the breakdown of how you catch a bird, you know, and I learn a lot too, you know, that's the other benefit of implementing, you know, culture into, uh, into the curriculum, because then you learn. Right now you're only at negative 40. If they're good at participating in their culture, they even perceive themselves as good as participating in their culture, which most of them are, you know, you got third grade boys, they're starting to learn how to hunt, um, you know, my second grader this year, Timmy, my one boy, he shot a seal this summer. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know of anywhere where second graders are running around with guns, um, you know, and shooting seals and providing food for their family. Um, third grade is typically the age when girls start cleaning meat out here, as far as I can tell. Um, you know, so they're good at those things and they perceive themselves as being good at those things. So if we can incorporate those things into the classroom, you know, any opportunity we get, if we do that, you know, the kid will feel successful, the kid will be successful. So overall, they're really good kids. They're really knowledgeable about the place that they live. And it shows. The youth of this village take pride in what they do. Here we see two young ladies practicing their carving techniques using soap. Carving is an age-old tradition of the Anupak people. You sit some cushions in there, that would be a nice couch. Next week, you can make a recliner. Diomede School has made sure that the youth of the village have activities to do in the evenings. Teachers donate much of their time to make sure that these kids keep busy learning both Western culture and their own. Very good. These young ladies are learning how to use a sewing machine. On an island where there are no malls or clothing stores, knowing how to make their own clothes will be beneficial for these youth. Now sew along here, straight down. Okay, now what do you need? Good, lift up the back. Where's Laura? Flying in Alaska? Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. It's tax season and living in rural Alaska means that it could take weeks, even months, to get your tax returns in the mail. It's always two weeks, sometimes six to eight weeks if I remember correct. 
Let Liberty Tax take away the worry and the wait. Simply pick up the phone and call toll-free 1-866-563-2700. You can file your taxes electronically from the comfort of your home, and you can usually pick up your return the next day at your local AC store. I go through John Hostetter. I trust him. I think I've got more on my returns with him than I would by myself. Liberty Tax guarantees the largest refunds at a smaller price and can often put money in your pocket the very same day. Quick and easy for me. So don't wait around for your tax returns in the mail. Give Liberty Tax a call. Liberty Tax, specializing in rural Alaska. Fast, friendly, trustworthy. That's how I feel with them. John's good people. Life on Little Diomede is not easy. It's a way of life, though, that's been passed on from generation to generation. And today we look at subsistence, a way of life of gathering and living off the land from what surrounds you, a way of life that's passed from the elders to the youth, a way of life that the men teach, the young boys and the women continue to pass on their knowledge. I have um, seven children. Um, I didn't grow. I grew. I didn't grow up learning my um, Nupiaq language, and this is one thing I could teach my kids, and because I love them, and other kids. Andrea Sulik spends many of her evenings at the school teaching the youth many of the traditional songs and some not so traditional songs. They come from Diamid, some are from Russia, some are, um, I guess, what our elders made. You know, like stuff that came before, like we have a helicopter song. And, um, when the first helicopter came, I guess some, uh, one of our elders made it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Something I value a lot. Something I'm like I'm good at. It took me years to really become good. And they get to know the right way to dance. You know, like I was taught. song and dance rings back through centuries. It's more than stories and movements. It's one way that these people express themselves and share with others, sharing who they are. Emotions do have meaning. It expresses some feelings, something they see, or somebody who created the song. It's just like it's just like a poetry. Years ago, it's just one form of uh, entertainment for the back only entertainment for it. It's, within the community. The, the old folks used to say, I used to remember saying that when you feel down, when you feel depressed, the best place to go to the, to the dances, Eskimo dances, and uh, it make you feel a lot better. It's still, it's still there. The dancing is not as strong as it used to be when I was growing up. When I was growing up, that was our entertainment, you know? It happened every Sunday. It's still around, but it's not as strong, and it's still really beautiful. 
For the past two days, there have been few seals coming close to the island. Today, Andrew has decided to try hunting a little closer to town. A cormorant drifts by, closely watching the hunter. But Andrew pays little attention to the long-necked bird. However, a duck has caught his attention. Andrew slips around to the other side of the rocks to get a better shot. If there's one lesson the hunters of Diomede have learned, it's that patience pays off. Andrew will now have to retrieve his bird before the current takes it away. As the bird drifts around the point, Andrew tosses his throwing line out. The object is to snag part of the bird with the hooks of the throwing line. Andrew will have to be quick because the weather is starting to change. Although Andrew is unable to successfully snag the bird, he does manage to get it closer to the shore and eventually retrieves the bird. These young men are stretching walrus skins over an ubiak, measuring for length. These skins will be measured and sewn together into one skin. The skin sewers of Diomede are experts at what they do. With a needle and sinew, the women will join together five walrus hides to form the waterproof skin of the ubiak. It's an art that they've learned from their ancestors. Keeping with tradition, Vera Ozena is working side by side with her daughter, Andrea Suluk. It's a time consuming work that requires a strong back and precision sewing. It'll take these ladies a few hours to complete this project, but the umiak that they are making the skin for should last several seasons. <laughs> In the meantime, the umiak must be cleaned and prepped before the new skins can be put on. It's a long process that can take all day to complete. When the skins are finished, they will be draped over the umiak frame. Several loops have been made in the skin that will be used to lash the skin to the frame of the umiak. Travis Koyaktuk is helping tie down the skins to the umiak. Around here, the youth are actively involved in subsistence activities, something the adults of this community are proud to see. Umiak is like no other boat. Umiaks can hold an incredible amount of weight, and unlike aluminum boats, umiaks are extremely flexible and durable. As we traveled around the island in one of Aja's umiaks, it was easy to see why they called the island the rock. On the east coast of the island, we passed a popular place for picking berries and greens, known as 
the valley. As we rounded the south side of the island, a fox darted up the side of the hill, disappearing into the rocks. By the time we traveled around the island, the sun was setting and the lights of Diomede reflected off the water as though to say, welcome home. Hunting is a timeless tradition here in Diomede. It's not something you just go out and do. It takes years of preparation to become a hunter. Besides learning about the sea and the land, young hunters must also know the hand signals that are used while out hunting. Animal signals when you're out boating. The more man can hear you, this is the seal. The seal. We just look back at the motor man. It'll pop up. See wars. Wars. Why don't you just collect it? Uh, it kind of just made that up. I've been doing that with my uncle. <laughs> no, but a war sign. Well, going down, well, or um, another one. Um, I think they eat that this gray well. But uh, bowhead, bowhead, this is bowhead sign. A bowhead. It's still the same, but well. If you can't make it out, just go like that. Well, if you can make it out, bowhead. Uh, polar bear, like it's walking. A game on top of the ice, call that, uh, I think, kamoguta. Uh, on top of the ice, seal on top of the ice, or animal on top of the ice. <laughs> I can't do that on the camera. Bird, we just go like that. If you think it's seal, somebody will go like this, bird. You go like this seal, you know, look for, gaze for a while and look at it. Oh, they grow wings. <laughs> or dive. My students came to me at the beginning of the year well prepared for first grade. They could write real letters. They could sound out words. Back at school, the kids are attending a pep assembly to recognize the outstanding achievements of some of the younger children. So, Marianne, you want to come get your certificate? Okay. <laughs> Rebecca Ozena. <laughs> Felicia. And Sophie. Thank you very much. This pep assembly is also a way for the youth to have a little fun at the end of the week. Principal Dwayne Bonson has lined up a couple events that require some of his old clothes. <laughs> the object here, put on a suit and tie, run down to the other end of the gym, Take off the suit and tie and let your teammate do the same thing. Yes, the people of Diomede know how to have fun. And with all the hard work it takes to survive on Little Diomede, nobody deserves it more.
For the past two days, there have been few seals coming close to the island. But that hasn't seemed to discourage Andrew. In fact, he's making himself a new throwing line out of driftwood and screws. You don't just go down to the store and buy a throwing line. You spend the hours it takes to do it right, the way your elders taught you. Pounding, bending, and turning until the desired outcome is achieved. It's this kind of dedication and commitment that one must have to live here on the island known as Inalak. Thank you for joining us for this two-part series on Diomede. I'm in my new location. Jeannie Green Productions has moved. Our new address is 6250 West Tuttle Place, Anchorage, Alaska, number 5. The phone numbers are the same. The email's the same. The website's the same. But our address has changed, and we have a new set under construction. God bless every single one of you, and thank you so much for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska. We'll see you again next week. To purchase a copy of this program, have your credit card ready and call area code 907-563-7440 or send $20 check or money order to Ginny Green Productions, 6250 Tuttle Place, Suite Number 5, Anchorage, Alaska, 99507. Ask for the program number listed below.